Oh, goody, it's the Problem the Family podcast. <laughs> or as they might say in Kid Icarus Uprising, Problem the Family podcast. Podcast episode four. Pikmin 3 and Nintendo's next system. Hey guys, and welcome to the show. I am Matthew Toronto. Yeah, it's the show! It's the show, it's back! The podcast. Oh man! It's exciting. We are back I'm again. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Because we're talking about Pikmin 3 today. And Wait, uh, what? I think... Yeah, Pikmin 3, that was the, <laughs> that was the topic. Oh yeah, that one. I remember yeah, that's, that's the one, yeah. It's the, the first Wii U game we're, we're covering on this thing instead of some, some old ancient game. That no one's played. Yeah. Because fortunately, Nintendo new. finally released a game on the Wii U, and it's called Pikmin yeah, 3. Yeah, Nintendo. Stupid Nintendo. Nah, uh, those guys are great. Alright, so anyway, uh, let's get let's get started. Let's get cracking. So, uh, I'm going to actually add a new section right here. Right before our comic discussion. Ah, sorry, what am I talking about? Right before our game discussion, we are going to briefly talk about the latest news. Here we are in the latest news, and what's happened today? Let's see, let me go through my paper in here. Oh, the 2DS was announced. 2DS, that's right. We already had, we already had a 3DS, like, that sounds like a step back. Yeah, I know, we're, we're going back to 2D now, because 3D is, is passe. No, I'm, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of this, but yeah, the 2DS is the new uh, budget price 3DS, um, except it doesn't play games in 3D. It's $130, and it's kind of a uh, lower-end version of the 3DS releasing uh, the same day as Pokemon X and Y. Now, uh, this this new device has been met with a little bit of controversy, so, uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on it? My thoughts are that it's kind of a vindication that the 3D feature was kind of a gimmick, which is Whoa. not to really disparage it, because I think the 3D is kind of cool, but it doesn't really play an essential role in most games, and uh, the fact that they're releasing a 3DS without the 3D kind of adds credence to that because like okay you can pretty much play every game without the 3d and it's all the same so uh yeah i mean that that makes sense right there like i i like the 3d effect but i mean to be honest it's not really like um initially i thought it would be kind of like playing tennis with one eye versus two eyes you know all of a sudden everything that clouds would part the heavens would smile upon mario and be like so <laughs> intuitive to jump on any goomba you know but, yeah. I mean, it's it's a cool feature, it's nice, but you're right, I don't think it's really required in pretty much any 3DS game. I think there's a few of them where it kind of helps a little bit, but it's it's a pretty subtle thing, and um, I, I know a lot of gamers either can't see it or don't really care about it. So, I mean, I think the 2DS is a, is a pretty good idea in that sense, and also because... But it's not foldable. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like a slab. It's like a slab. Big it's like a, uh, slab. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you know what else isn't foldable? The iPod. Wait, or pad? <laughs> you mean the iPad? Yeah, yeah. But, that but that thing. Okay, the difference is on on the iPad, the whole thing is pretty much like screen surface area. On the three D, on the two DS, excuse me, it's like you know you have a couple little screens in there, but it's a lot of like flat, blank plastic. Yeah, that, that, well, that, that's true. It it's it's actually one screen in there. So um, that, that's kind of weird, you know. It's like one screen displaying two different things, and the rest of it is covered. But um, I think the clamshell design, like taking that away, was was part of the, uh, I guess, two things. That was a cost cutting measure, and also I think uh, 3DSs would be kind of broken by kids a lot more due to that thing. Like the hinge would be kind of the first thing to go. So I think it's yeah. kind of a case of considering the target audience, and it's really the target audience in this case is kind of uh, younger kids and people that are kind of on the fence about getting a 3DS and waiting for kind of a budget version. But it sure does look funny. Yeah, I mean... It's it really funny, look funny looking. Yeah. So, I, I mean, mean, I guess it kind of fulfills those needs, but I, yeah. I don't think... I mean, I got a 3DS. I wouldn't buy one. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, yeah, we, we got to remember it's not really for us. Like, if I, if I had a son or daughter that was, like, 
six or seven and they really needed a 3DS, or really wanted a 3DS, you know, I, I would consider this, for instance. But for me, I like my XL. Yeah. Nice and big. All right, so other news. Um, there's finally a Wii U price drop. Price drop for the Wii finally. U. We all saw it coming. I was I waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. So $300 now with Nintendo Land, or if you want to wait for the uh, Zelda bundle, which comes with kind of this gold filigy around the uh, Wii U gamepad, and uh, Wind Waker HD sort of pre-installed. Um, that's the same price, but without Nintendo Land. Oh, so it's the Wind Waker, like, downloaded version? It's the digital version on the console? Yeah, it's a digital Wind Waker, which is kind of funny, because I don't really associate Zelda with the kind of game you you would need to have, like, to play a little bit each day. But, I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm sure it's, you know, I'm sure it's cheaper on Nintendo's end, and, uh, you know, you're still getting the whole game, so... Yeah, kind of a no good Nintendo deal. Land. Why don't they put Nintendo Land in there too? I mm, well, uh, I guess that'd be more expensive. <laughs> the, the idea is you have, yeah, you can either get the Nintendo Land one or the Wind Waker HD one. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess, because uh, it used to be three fifty with Nintendo Land. So it's cheaper, but it's not a lot cheaper. Yeah, it's like so. a fifty dollars price drop, basically. So for those that didn't want Nintendo Land but did want Zelda HD, um, this is a pretty good deal because it's basically $100 cheaper than what it would previously be for that. Without, except without Nintendo Land. Without Nintendo Land, you're right, right. Um, I, well, this is probably for an, another podcast, but I'm not feeling too excited about Wind Waker HD just because the original just looks so good. It does, it does. And it's age, it's like the, the game that's aged the least out of that entire generation. Yeah, you can look at Wind Waker nowadays and it still looks like a fantastic game. It's, it's really a gorgeous game and, uh, I really don't see the benefit of choosing that for an HD version. Yeah. Now, um, the initial screenshots actually had me a little worried because it looked like they subdued the cell shaded effect, but that turned out to be, like, not that representative of the actual game. Uh, the actual game itself looks pretty nice running uh, in person, but, you know, if you don't have Wind Waker, I would suggest getting it. Well, sure, Wind Waker's a great game, but you could also just buy it for, like, 10 bucks on eBay or something and you'd be <laughs> yeah, That is true, and it'll still look good. Yeah. All right, so that's that's the latest news for now. So let's move on to our game discussion. Pick me. Now, uh, Pikmin Three, I think, requires a little bit of backstory um, for this series, Pikmin, which initially showed up at uh, E3 2001, uh, right next to a little game called Smash Brothers Melee. Yeah. So, Pikmin was sort of this weird little, like, I don't even remember what I first thought when I saw it. I mean, I was, I was what, 16 at the time or so? And uh, I was really hyped for Smash Brothers Melee, because it looked so awesome. Like, it, it, they cranked it up. They released that uh, intro video as part of the E3, um, like, one of the trailers. Yeah. And it was, like, Nintendo history in, like, two minutes of FMV. And you gotta remember, like, FMVs were, like, completely off limits to us throughout the entire 64 generation. Because of the, uh, you know, not the non-disc based media, so it was like a really cool cutscene. It was really cool, you know, ice climbers and it's like Bowser and Peach. And then you had this game Pikmin, and it was about this weird little guy that was in a garden or something, followed by all these strange plant things, and he's like throwing them. And it's like, what's what's going on with this game? And what what is this like Pokemon or something? It sounds really similar to Pokemon. So, um, but uh, you know, sure enough, Pikmin came out the same day as Smash Brothers, no less. And uh, despite that, it, it got a pretty good, you know, following, and it got some good reviews. And uh, it was kind of one of the defining titles of the GameCube, especially around that time for me. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a basic game. It's kind of short. You're using your Pikmin to, of course, go around and kill things and do little tasks and basically help Alamar get back home by repairing his, uh, his crashed spaceship within the, the 30 days. So it's kind of a dark premise, you know, when you think about it, because you have 30 days to do this or else you die, basically. So this kind of puts a lot of pressure on first-time players who've never played, you know, any Pikmin game or any strategy game even, since they're Nintendo gamers, you know, they, it's a very real possibility. And uh, a lot of people didn't like that element so much. So uh, for Pikmin 2, which came out in 2004, uh, there was no time limit. There's still a day limit. You still have to get your Pikmin to the Onion by sunset, but in this time, instead of uh, instead of repairing your ship, you are getting uh, 
treasures to help the company that Olimar works for go out of debt. So, Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 were both really good games, and which, whichever game is better kind of depends on who you ask. Um, Pikmin 1 kind of has, I feel, stronger replay because it's kind of shorter and it's very focused on the tasks you do, um, going around the overworld and trying to maximize your efficiency by multitasking and by getting everything as quickly as possible. Um, Pikmin 2 has, doesn't really have that time constraint anymore, so it's a little bit more of an adventure. You're, and adding to that, you're going down these caves that are like multi-level dungeons, and time just stops completely in them. So it becomes less about time management and more about resource management. You only have the Pikmin you have. Um, you only have the Pikmin you brought in there with you. So if you start losing too many, you're not going to be able to get all the treasures out. So, uh, Chris, what did you think of like the uh, age-old argument of Pikmin One v Pikmin Two? Like, do you have a preference there? I do. Um, I really preferred the first Pikmin. Um, I think the focus you referred to made it a much more interesting game. Um, I, I never beat Pikmin 2, actually, because, I don't know, it, it just felt kind of aimless to me. I, I wasn't really motivated to continue on. Like, there were all the... Like, the cave dungeons and stuff were, were a cool idea. Um, but it just... It kind of dragged for me. Um, I mean, the multiplayer was kind of fun, and... You know, the level design was good, but I, I, I preferred the focus of the first game, and I thought the, the time limit really added to the sensation of... You know, it gave you kind of a, a driving motivation to actually, you know, find the, the items and get off the planet. Um, and yeah. I liked that a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's interesting because, like, I, I actually replayed both games before Pikmin 3 came out, um, you know, the, the months before then. And Pikmin 2, I, I find it really enjoyable when I first uh, played through the game just because I never knew what was coming up next. And there were all these bosses... And there is like this Piclopedia thing, which is kind of like this whole encyclopedia on all the different um, creatures and stuff. And right. you could view them and, and throw food at them and watch them react and stuff. And uh, it, it just was really polished. But I think the replay of that game is not as good. Like if I think about replaying a Pikmin game, it, at this point it's going to be one or three. Just because two is, it's so big, it's almost like, I don't know, like a Zelda or something where you don't really, you enjoy it, but you don't really want to replay it that much. And, and yeah, the dungeons do kind of feel a little bit like a slog sometimes, since they take up so much of the actual game's time. Um, they, they can get a little bit tiresome. I mean, that, it's a pretty long game. So, I guess that brings us to Pikmin 3, which kind of combines several elements from both of the games. So, Pikmin 3, uh, it changes a few things from Pikmin 2 and from Pikmin 1. Uh, you have this 30, instead of the 30 day limit or the uh, no time limit, you have kind of a compromise where you get fruit uh, from the levels and each fruit gives you between half a day to three days extra to uh, to find more fruit. You know, you're playing as three explorers that are looking for food because um, their, their planet's on the brink of starvation. So it's cool because you don't have a strict time limit, but it still keeps you on your toes in that you have to keep uh, making progress each day to be able to earn more days to play. Right. Um, so it, it's kind of a way they have their cake and eat it too. Although it's a little bit, um, it's still a little bit of a of a false like limit because any decent player I think is going to accumulate a lot of extra days <laughs> through getting the fruit. Like past a certain point, you're going to have like twenty or thirty or forty more days, and it's like you're not really going to feel that pressure anymore. Yeah, I, I had that experience as well. It, it felt like uh, you never really had to struggle to stay alive. Um, I liked the idea. I mean, it was it was cool to see all the different kinds of fruit and how they you know turn them into juice and then the juice can yeah. change colors. Like, yeah, the, the ju- yeah, yeah, the juice is so like uh, it's it's so uh, it's so fun to watch. Just yeah. like it pouring into the thing and changing the colors in the kind of this subtle way. Yeah, they did a good the, job with that. The fruits are so yummy looking too, <laughs> like pretty good it's a, it's a it makes me want to eat fruit yeah yeah the, it's like a it's like a hidden agenda in the game <laughs> from a visual standpoint fruit. they did a very good job but uh from yeah. a gameplay standpoint it doesn't really make it feel you know limited or there isn't much of a time constraint i mean maybe in the first few days you know you feel like right oh man i, I don't have any juice i gotta find some fruit but it after that it, it kind of just becomes you know kind of more like pikmin 2 where you're just kind of going okay i'll go to this level or i'll go to this level and you're not really worrying about staying alive yeah Right, right. That's true. Um, 
And they, they did take out the caves entirely. Uh, yeah. Everything you do now is is, is on, on the, the actual day's length and stuff. Which means I think the combat is a little bit more subdued in this game compared to Pikmin 2. Pikmin yeah. 2 was really combat heavy. Um, but at the same time, Pikmin 2... Uh, a lot of people will agree that it, it was a little bit unbalanced in terms of the Pikmin type. Because uh, once you get enough purples, you can pretty much steamroll almost any enemy besides like the electric ones. Right. Um, cause your whistle is pretty uber. Like it, it, you know, can summon things that are like, it basically dispels Pikmin on fire or that are drowning or yeah. that are poison. Um, so yeah, so there's not quite as much combat in Pikmin three. It's kind of more focused on, uh, multitasking cause you have the three captains now. So, uh, I mean, it, it works really well. Like, I, I really enjoyed going around and building bridges and, like, switching to a different captain and throwing a few Pikmin at one wall and throwing a few Pikmin at the, uh, like, uh, what do you do besides walls and bridges? There's, I don't know, like like picking up an enemy or a fruit or something. You know, and it, the game has no shortage of things to do. Um, and it seems like the level design just feels different. It feels uh, more cavernous, I guess. Because you're, you're locked out of a lot more places at once, I think. Um, yeah. The past game kind of felt a little bit more open. But I, I think uh, it, it works really well to the game's advantage. And I think it's going to be uh, an enjoyably replayable game, um, all things considered. Yeah, I, I could see the, uh, the ability to multitask, I think, was a good idea. And I think I could see it probably being really uh, advantageous for, like, speed runs or something. But, yeah. but just playing through the game, you're not really pressured to make much use of that like most of the time when i played it you know i knew that i could send another guy off to work on something else but you're usually completing one thing pretty quickly you know you can just wait for it to finish it's it's not you don't have a lot of pressure to do multiple things at once um and well, yeah that's true in terms of the in terms of the uh like the actual gameplay itself like in terms of the main game because you probably won't have a shortage of, of food yeah but um what people have been doing is, is like you said, the speed runs. There's, there's like a 10-day run for getting everything. Wow. Which is pretty insane. Um, I can't even imagine being able to do that. I think my first run took like 40 days or something. But um, I, I think you're right in that, that the main gameplay itself doesn't actually call for that too much. Unless you're like me and you just can't leave any Pikmin behind for Sunset. <laughs> like, I went through the whole game without any Pikmin dying to Sunset. That's wow. kind of like my... That's that's kind of my big thing. Like I can't leave any Pikmin behind. <laughs> that's very noble of you. Yeah, they can get eaten, they can get drowned, they can get flattened, but they can't get left behind for sunset. <laughs> the the game makes a special like case for Pikmin that die by sunset. You notice that? Like like it, it has a separate category for that. Yeah, yeah, you're so right. So it's like wow, you know, it's just it's just uh, just carelessness, you know, if you lose them like that. So that that's led to some kind of uh, nerve wracking final moments, but. I, I will say this about multitasking. Um, there's the mission mode, which I personally like uh, as much as the story, pretty much, because it really is. Um, it really does basically train you to play the game to its fullest and be the most efficient you can be. Uh, you basically have these five. You have three different categories and five levels in each, um, and they're they're. Besides the boss fights, you uh, you have unique ones. You know they're all unique from the main game, so they're built specifically for this. And it's really addictive to try to uh, get these platinum medals by either getting all the fruit or killing all the enemies. Have you been able to try that out, Chris? No, no, I haven't. Wow, Chris. Well, I guess I'll just talk about mission mode. Yeah, it's no, it's really cool. Like, um, I didn't I didn't really know what to expect going into it. But, uh, you know, they have, like, online leaderboards and everything for it, too. So, I just I just really like uh, trying to maximize your efficiency in these games. You know, you throw one leader over here to pick up, you know, to pluck Pikmin and throw these guys on the wall. Then switch leaders and he's done plucking Pikmin. And you throw in Pikmin at these, you know, snow drifts to, for them to start digging out. And you throw a few more at a wall, an electric wall. And then you have these other guys building the bridge. It's just really, uh, it's kind of intense, you know? You're yeah, that sounds super pretty focused. good. Yeah, and it and, uh, makes really good use of the whole uh, go here functionality on the gamepad that uh, you pretty much have to use to minimize downtime, you know? You, you really want to use that to move one captain back to the ship to pick Pikmin or to a different area that would take, you know, a good amount of time otherwise. Right. 
So, uh, that's Pikmin 3. I'm trying to think what else we haven't really touched on. Well, I, overall, I just really like it. You know, it's good visuals, good replay. I'm not sure if it's my favorite in the series or not, but I mean, I think it takes a lot of what's the best things between 1 and 2 and puts them all in one package. Although it's a little short. I think one exception to that is the, uh, the boss fights. Um, I, I liked the boss fights in the game, but I think they would have benefited from not suffering from the time uh, restrictions of the, of the days. Um, oh, yeah. Like, if they'd done something like... Like, you mentioned earlier that the, in the caves of Pikmin 2, it suspended the time, you know, the, the time no longer elapsed in the caves. I think right. they should have done that for some of the boss fights because I, I, I found myself several times in a situation in a boss fight where the time was running out and I, you know, couldn't finish the boss fight in time. And that was pretty frustrating. Yeah, well, I imagine. Did you did you replay the day or did you just go back the next yeah, day? Yeah, I just ended up replaying the day. Well, the, the boss, you know, they, they keep their damage. Oh, do they? Between days. See, I, yeah, did, yeah, I, you know did, I didn't realize that, actually. Oh, dang. Yeah, they, they keep the... It, it's kind of... Uh, that's kind of the way to... Uh, their, their way around is that the bosses actually keep the damage that, that they've been inflicted. Oh. Um, I I would pretty much just do other things if I, if I was about to go fight a boss. Yeah. I, I just didn't want to deal with the, uh, the clock at all for a boss fight. So I would pretty much devote a full day for a boss fight. Yeah, that's probably a better way to do it. I agree. Yeah, but yeah, they do, they do keep their damage, so there there is that kind of a uh, little bit of a reprieve. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, so yeah, Pikmin Three is is a good game. I mean, I enjoyed it. I would. Uh, there's a few things I I miss the sea stick swarm. Yes, yes, that is missed indeed. I mean, there's. I know that the Wiimote doesn't have a second stick, but there's really no reason why they can't do it like they did in the uh, new Play Control Pikmin games, where you just hold down on the D-pad and point. Yeah. It feels a little funny, but it's it's still like really intuitive whenever you have a bunch of little dead bugs that you want every Pikmin to pick up one of, you know, instead of throwing them manually. Um, but otherwise, just like the controls feel a lot tighter than the past games, the Pikmin AI is better, the graphics are like really nice sometimes, especially when it's raining. Like everything is just slick looking when it rains. I don't know how they did it. There's like some sort of sheen on everything. The visuals are done very well in the game. Um, I think particularly the, the fruit looks amazing. Um, but everything else does too. Like it's I don't know. I, I know what you're referring to by the sheen of like the you know, wet surfaces. Um, they, they put a lot of good detail into the different effects of the game. I think that's the yeah. main strength of the game is the visual effects. Um, you know, if you look really closely at some of the textures or something, or polygon, you know, yeah, some of the ground textures are a little iffy. A little but iffy, but th that's pretty the, minor. The, the lighting is really nice too. Like the lighting yeah. is yeah. feels kind of on on the next level compared to, to other Nintendo games. So, that welcome to the cool. world of HD, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they they said that they you know kind of struggled to start working with HD. Uh, assets, um, but mm -hmm. they seem to be doing pretty well with it, as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so, well done, Pikmin 3. Um, good game for Wii U owners, looking for something fun to play. Yeah. Um, so looking let's, for something uh, at all to play. Looking for something, that's right! Alright, so let's, let's move on to our next section. And this, of course, is the classic rant section. Why do they do that? Why do they do that?! Why? 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 Why did they do that? Sometimes you do the things that we think it's not about them. Let's go. Why did they do that? Why? 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 So I guess there might be a chip on my shoulder because I'm talking about why did they do that again. Uh... And, uh, let's see. What are we talking about? I have this quote somewhere. Here it is. Okay, so... DuckTales! Woohoo! Yeah, so DuckTales! I've been playing as Scrooge McDuck. The, uh, richest duck in the world, as far as I know. I mean... I, I assume he is, anyway. He's pretty rich. So, uh, I was playing my brother's copy of DuckTales Remastered on the Wii U uh, yesterday, and I really liked it. So I think I'm going to go out and buy it on my system after this podcast. But anyway, um... This is about DuckTales, which I found uh, pretty enjoyable. This is about GameSpot's review. And I don't want to go and pick apart every review that I disagree with or whatever, because that'd be pretty annoying. But I do want to focus on this one section, because it, it kind of it kind of hits a nerve with me. All right? 
So GameSpot gave DuckTales like four out of ten or four and a half out of ten, or something like that. And, uh, you know, it's whatever. That's their opinion. But I don't like this criticism they have right here. And here is the quote. Scrooge has a finite number of lives, and if you should die, you have to replay levels from the very beginning. Rather than add a satisfying challenge, such as such a punitive system only adds to the frustration. All right, so I, I don't, I don't like. Okay, this is like, this is like, mm, I don't like how games nowadays will hold. This ties into the whole games holding your hands too much thing. I yeah. feel like every game developer, not every game, but a lot of game developers really just want you to see the end of their games. So they'll, they'll do everything they can to let you see the end of the game because that's what you deserve. But no, that's not how it <laughs> work. Alright, DuckTales is a remake of an NES classic Capcom game. Alright? And for anyone that associates you know, classic Capcom games with the NES, they think of Mega Man, which yeah. also did this. You have three lives. If you don't get to the end of the level within those three lives, too bad. <laughs> you die. You have to do it again because you suck. You have to have a certain level of skill to be able to beat the game. You shouldn't be able to just have it handed to you, okay? Yeah. DuckTales has a fair difficulty, all right? And it comes with three difficulty levels. You could play it on easy if you want. And if you play it on normal, you're going to have a little bit of a challenge. You get okay. three lives to get to these levels that are kind of long. You know, they're longer than the NES version. They're maybe 15 minutes long. Yeah. And you can get an extra life within the stages. And there's other power-ups and stuff. You can get, like, life upgrades. So it's this is not like Battletoads hard, okay? So I don't like the idea of reviewers whining about replaying games because they failed at them. You should have a penalty for messing up in a game. You shouldn't have save spots or like spawn points or checkpoints or whatever they are like every 10 seconds especially in a side-scrolling platformer no i completely agree with that i think that is something that modern games have overdone to the point of ridiculousness that you you no longer suffer any penalties for failing in a game and it, that that robs the games of any satisfaction when you actually complete them when there's yeah. no sense of accomplishment you know we need challenge in games. I, I, I've, I've long been a fan of, of games that are tough but fair. And, yeah. and DuckTales definitely falls into that, that category, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like you only get one hit to get through this massive thing. You have three lives and you can, re you know, you, there's life fill-up items and stuff. It's not particularly difficult. So, uh, that, I, had to, I had to get that off my chest because that bothers me. <laughs> because what it does is it tells developers, oh, no. You know, it tells, like, their executives... This game reviewed poorly because it's too hard. We gotta make the next one easier until soon we're just gonna go through these roller coaster rides that have no challenge and that everyone wants us to just see the end of. And there's not gonna be any satisfaction there. So that was lame. That well, was lame game style. I don't know if satisfaction sells these days. I mean that that kind of de that defines a lot of modern games is just like a <laughs> roller coaster ride, you know, like you barely have any interaction yeah. at all. At least in DuckTales, they still give you that interaction. You know, you, you have complete control over all these difficult fights and stuff. Um, yep, I, I've yep. Never, I haven't played a lot of the game, but uh, I, I like the NES sensibilities and that it allows you to, you know, die <laughs> and fail. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, it's like, man up, guy, you know? I mean, that said, I'm, I'm sure there are reasonable uh, reasons to, uh, to, to mark off DuckTales. I, I think there's probably too many, uh, like, little parts that take away the control of the player like there's these little voice cut voice cut scenes yeah. which are i mean which are kind of neat you know but it would be nice to be able to have a version like a, a mode where you don't have to uh stop at all but difficulty is not one of them all right and counting games off for restarting them is is that's lame that's really lame it, and uh, i mean i'm even kind of like i even kind of feel funny about the super guide on on mario games but i, I don't like those it, at all I mean, I kind of let it pass because the game itself is still challenging. I just never use the super guide, but I still think it's kind of yeah. flawed in concept. Because why, you know, why should you get more levels anyway? Just beat this one, you know. <laughs> it's not like the levels are going to get easier. Well, to be fair, in some sometimes you know someone has a trouble with a certain aspect of a level that's I don't know. It could be just really difficult for them for whatever reason. Maybe they're not as experienced in games as you are. You know, they just can't make the certain jump or something and. It just allows them to, to okay skip this level just get the next one. For a game like Mario, there's like a you know hundreds of levels in the game, and the, you know if they have a trouble with one specific level, I, I don't really mind the game allowing them to kind of skip through it without much trouble. 
I guess it's it's just when you have something like that, it it could really apply to any level. I kind of like you know I'd rather than do something like Super Mario World where you can do an alternate route around the level, or like Mario Three where you have an item that lets you skip one level that's really rare. Yeah, you know something to kind of reel it in a little bit because I, I I can understand getting stuck on a level like that, mm-hmm. but I mean you know five deaths or eight deaths or whatever it is, I don't know if that's enough deaths <laughs> to call to call in the invincible Luigi. All right, so that is my little, uh, why did they do that bit? So let's move on to music. Comic talk. Comic talk. Comic talk. All right, so uh, this is our first comic talk past 500. Yeah. All right, so we still have kind of a number of these, so I'm going to go through pretty quickly, as quickly as I can anyway. Fruit Delivery is our first one. This is uh, my Pikmin 3 sort of poster-sized comic where they uh, are delivering the fruit and then suddenly it disappears and all of them look very guilty in fact. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a couple notes on this one. I, I actually, this is the, one of the first comics where I wanted to make a really long comic, horizontally. But I was worried about the programming aspect of the thing on the site. You know, because, like, nobody wants to scroll horizontally, but to do yeah. it for, like, one comic can be kind of fun, you know? Yeah. But I, I didn't want it to mess up with any of the formatting of the site. I think it would have started looking funny. So I, I kind of worked it into a, a vertical format instead. Um, and, and this is kind of one of those comics that's a pretty simple idea, but I, I really just wanted to kind of drive home the uh, the humor with the with the in, like the expressions and the interactions with the Pikmin themselves. So uh, that, that was kind of my goal with it, and also sort of uh, put a little bit of extra I- uh, effort into the art to kind of pay my respects to the game itself and its lovely, lovely environments. Yeah, I think you did a good job with that, especially the, uh, the fruit looks as scrumptious as it does in the game, I'd say. Cool. Um, yeah, although, although it doesn't the game establish the Pikmin, you know, they photosynthesize, they don't really need food, fruit, right? <laughs> I guess not, but it kinda, I kind of always wondered, you know, like, I, I feel bad for the Pikmin. That's kind of a common theme with my Pikmin-related comics. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, the Pikmin always get the butt of every situation. I mean, they, they are not treated well in the games by any ma- stretch of the yeah. imagination. Yeah, so I kind of I, I kind of want them to be like, eh, you know, I, we we harvested this fruit ourselves. I have a little bit of it. <laughs> a little bit. And, they ate all of it. Yeah, they did kind of eat all. They they left the rinds and stuff. You can make some sort of juice out of that. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you could maybe survive on that. With their space bit. age technology, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, the juicer. All right, so next we have Diamond Dog, an Earthbound comic. Whoa, Earthbound, Earthbound comics. comics. You made an yeah. Earthbound comic. Why would you do that? Why Why would I do that? That weird game. Earthbound comics are hard because, like, the game is already funny. So it's like, yeah. you can't really... I mean, you could you could spoof serious things easily, but spoofing something that's funny is, is a little trickier. Uh, this comic came to mind when uh, I, I made a note of it in the uh, in the actual bio... Uh, sorry, the blog post, but, uh, yeah, my, my, my wife was fighting the diamond dog and was trying to find... You know, she was going through Paula's inventory, and one of them was the first sale sign. And uh, just like that, I had an idea. So thanks, Sarah, for helping me along with that one. And uh, I always like drawing the uh, the chosen four. Um, I always try to give them, uh, you know, 
give them their little trademark uh, personalities as best I can without any dialogue. Uh, next we have hover, yeah, hover carts. Mario revolutionizes eyes is racing yet again! And then Falcon is sad. Because, let's face it, this is this is like Mario Kart 8 is, is F-Zero Mario Kart. I know. Which uh, is kind of cool, but uh Kind of cool, but I, I could use an F-Zero if you ask me. Like, I could really use an F-Zero. It, it, it's a little sad because Miyamoto has recently talked about F-Zero and he's like, you know, I like this series, but I can't really think of what else we could do with it right yeah, now. Yeah, I've seen that. So, so it's like, well, I mean, I can I can picture for Falcon being pretty frustrated about that. <laughs> and the last one was really good. Like, the, the Sega one on the GameCube? Yeah, team, GX was amazing. That was like, what that was, was that, my like favorite ten one. years ago. Uh, it's really good. That was about, it, yeah, ten years ago, I think. That game still looks good, too. It really does. It's, it definitely holds up today. Yeah. So, I'm looking forward to Mario Kart, but yeah, uh, it'd be nice to have another F-Zero. Yeah. Uh, next we have Pit doing push-ups. Uh, ending 1 and Ending 2. Now, this is kind of interesting, because I think, Chris, you preferred... Which ending did you I prefer? preferred Ending 2. And Chris preferred Ending 2, because it kind of tied into the... The previous, the previous... Yeah, the heart, you know, cauldron, uh, tongue comics that you've done. And, uh... Yeah. And I think the first one, my problem with the first ending is that it, it, you don't really see him flying. You know, like, his wings are not flapping and... Uh, yeah, well, I guess it's a little bit of a stretch in that it's, the wings are kind of making him lighter. I, so you have to kind of make yes. that... that <laughs> you have to pull that together. Uh, but, but, in my defense, other people seem to like the second, the first ending better. But that might be because I made sort of an amateur mistake on the second ending, where it actually costs hearts... To bring the difficulty uh, meter to less than two. Wow. wow. <laughs> Too bad, Brawl in the family. <laughs> you lose. Yeah. Oh, well. You know, I, I, I do really like... Um, like, the first ending, you know... I didn't just end it on that on that first panel. I had, like, Pit kind of waving away the, the thing with yeah. that face. I was, I was really happy with the way that panel came out. Cause yeah, it's that's like, cute. I don't know. Uh, I, like, I like Pit. You know, he's, he's just the man. He's a charming little guy, but he's a charming uh, guy. I, 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 yeah, he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I think We Fit Trainer was originally supposed to kiss him on the cheek, but I thought yeah, that yeah. was it's it probably too easy of a cheek kiss. You know, she wouldn't she wouldn't she wouldn't kiss him. Just that's for not that. a professional relationship. Like, it, that's right. That's right. Yeah, uh, a, a chaste hug w- w- would work fine. You know. Yes. Yes. She, there'd have to be, there'd have to be something else to make, to make him kiss. You know, so I'm, I'm already, I'm already thinking about Wii Fit Trainer's character at this point. It's a good ship. I mean, I, I can go for that. <laughs> all right. So next we have, oh, more Pikmin three. All right, all right. So we got, uh, I, mean, oh, I, I really regret. I, I like the way this came out, but I really regret not make, not putting a uh, classic cartoon reference in, which I inadvertently put in every other uh, comic review that I've done. Mm. So if you go through the past comic reviews, there's there's a cartoon reference in every single one of them. But I, I had forgotten about that, so maybe I can uh, draw one in. Or maybe that Everything Looks Gorgeous panel could be called a, uh, I don't know, like a Ren and Stimpy homage. Because then they, <laughs> then they like their detailed close-ups. Yeah, kind of and, and then the uh, the Olimar, whoever, in the, the second to last panel looks kind of like Farnsworth. You could, you could say that's a Futurama <laughs> reference. Oh yeah, a little bit. <laughs> He's got those opaque glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's technically uh, an old Alf is who that is. Oh, okay. okay. Although I guess it's hard to tell since Alf doesn't really have too many distinguishing features besides his, his freckles. He just, he just looks like Olimar with really wide eyes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it's like Olimar is always shot. Yeah. <laughs> As our Alf. All right. Next we have Villager versus Bowser, where Villager fights Bowser and Bowser pushes down the... No, he doesn't push down the tree. I changed this. Yeah, uh, the Villager chops down Wispy Woods, yeah. and it's very sad. Uh, <laughs> is this your first time seeing this, Chris? Uh, yes, actually, I hadn't seen this one. Oh, nice! All right, all right. So we get we get a uh, we get a live unveiling. Yeah, initially, uh, what did I do? Oh, he chopped down the tree and it broke on Bowser's head. And then Bowser got mad and pushed down Wispy Woods, like uprooted him onto the villager, which I thought was kind of awesome because I've been playing Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, and like his his character in that game is so well done. Like he's he just. Everything he does, he always has to have some sort of Bowser-like uh, reason for doing anything he does, and the, da- the game does a good job of keeping him in character like that, and just having him be pretty brutal whenever he needs to be. <laughs> but uh, I changed it because uh, I think I mentioned it somewhere in the back. Oh, uh, wait, 
Uh, I don't know why I changed it. I, I, it could really go either way. I could have done two endings for this one, but I just did two endings for the other one, so you guys just gonna have to deal. Uh, I mean, that's pretty gruesome, though. Like, I mean, Wispy Woods is like a recurring character, and you just murdered him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the, the, the stump is still there, so I think he could grow back. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know exactly how it works with him. I don't know. Be, I don't know about that. Separate, would it be a separate Wispy Woods growing in his place? Um, okay, if you're if you're implying that the stump will grow back, then it's probably going to be the same Wispy Woods. I would think that if the stump is able to grow an, a whole new tree out of it, then it would probably be the same guy. I, but I really couldn't couldn't say for sure. <laughs> or Wispy. Uh, I'll have to bring him back somehow. He'll, he'll, he'll be back. He's not dead. I mean, come on. All right, and then he looks then we had he looks dead. <laughs> then we have today's comic, which is my fish eating a fish kind of. Uh, kind of nod today. Chris, have you not seen this one either? Uh, no, I hadn't, I hadn't checked these last two. Alright, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and read it. Oh, yeah. I read it. Room, chomp, room, chomp, room, <laughs> chomp, room, chomp, and room, chomp. Uh, uh, wait, wait. Uh, oh, I get it! I get it! Oh, it's pretty good! It. Oh, that's oh, pretty thanks, good! Thanks. It's yeah, yeah. Good. So we have, we have our fish eat fish eat fish dealy. Uh, and you know what? Like, a younger me could have ended it with that Kirby panel. But I thought, no, sir, no, sir. That's not that's not the kind of comic this is. <laughs> we got to bring things full circle. We got to give Cheap Cheap his time in the sun. Did you know I like looked up Cheap Cheap for like ten minutes before putting this up because I couldn't tell if it was hyphenated or not. <laughs> I'm trying to be accurate here, but but you, you kind of get all these different sources. Like it, it's it's I think it's been both. Really? But, uh, yeah, I saw the non-hyphenated version uh, more often. So yeah, I, I've that. seen it more often non-hyphenated. I think I would yeah. go with that person. Kirby technically can't eat things underwater, but you know whatever. He should be able to. I think I think that'd be kind of a neat mechanic. He's never had any water powers except water, <laughs> but uh, he can't use that underwater. So. Yeah, but if you're like the way he's, he's you know his suction works, he didn't inhale a lot of water while he's trying to inhale just like an object. That'd be kind of he'd know. be all sloshy. He would be, he'd be really bloated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially in this comic, you see he's causing uh, some really heavy waves when he sucks yeah. in Jabu Jabu there. Yeah. All right, and that brings us up to speed with the comic. So time for one more. I'm gonna hit the random button and see what pops up. Oh, okay. Trick Racing. Whoa. Which one hey, is that? this Mike Sightbots one, one sixty one. My Excitebots comic. I love Excitebots. Oh yeah, this yeah. one. I, I like the Excite Truck better personally, but I mean, okay. That's Whoa. Fine. Whoa, Dude, Excite yeah. Truck was awesome. I loved Excite Truck. No, Excite Truck was good. Like I have, I have both games, but but I, I really think Excite Bots kind of took it to the next level. It, it, it kind of person, it kind of personalized its gameplay a little better. I think. Um, I don't know. Like it kind of embraced the, the silly arcade nature of it, and it just there was a lot more kind of to do. I think. But there, uh, I can appreciate yeah. that. I think yeah, but uh, I, I like the overall persona of the first game better, and I like Excellent. the. Uh, you can have custom soundtracks in the you first like, one, yeah, which I like. Yeah, you like the custom soundtrack. Yeah, custom you, soundtracks. You really good. like the custom and, soundtrack. And, like, I, I don't know, the new mechanics they added in the new one didn't work as well for me. Um, I, I, I felt they were more organically implemented in the first one. Like, in the first Wait, one, that's true. pretty much every, <laughs> every way you got, like, stars in the first game was, you know, like, dodging right next to trees or something where you yeah. could pretty much do it anywhere throughout the level. And then Excitebots, it was more like, okay, here's the part where I'm going to throw a pie or I'm going to do yeah. something. Or here's a pole that I spin You're around, bowling. you know. So it, it yeah, was less but, organic in that element, which I, which kind of turned the, me off a little bit. There are, there are still drifts and, and tree runs and everything. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. You're just always getting stars. There's just a lot of things. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I mean, obviously, this is this is just playing off that whole idea of all these dangerous things getting you stars. So the first place would be all busted up. Uh, I don't really have much else to say about this one except uh, I kind of miss the Excite like franchise. I wonder didn't if that'll they make show like up a again. new Excite. They made an Excite something recently, didn't they? For the oh, Wii? actually, yeah. They they did make a digital um, version of Excite bike, um, and it was. It was pretty good, actually. I, I think I got it for free from something, uh, Club Nintendo or something, and uh, it's actually pretty good. I didn't play a whole lot of it, but it's 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 like the original Excite bike, but uh, you know, in three dimensions. So you still have that turbo mechanic, which is really fun. You still have the stage builder, all those nice things. All right, so that is our comic talk. The last thing I will talk about is Nintendo's next console. Oh yeah, you had some big ideas about this one. That's right. I've seen the future, guys. It's gonna happen. All right. Okay. 
No, no, no. It's it's either gonna happen or it or, should, or have it happen. won't happen, or it won't happen. I can guarantee. <laughs> I can guarantee it's yeah. gonna be one of those. It's, yeah, there we go. All right, so here's here's I I know now. I know now that uh, what Nintendo's next console is is going to be, and it's pretty clear when you look at the past couple of years of Nintendo releases. So let's look at the Wii U. We have this uh, system that's you know following up from the Wii. We have the gamepad as its big hook, and we have games that are finally in HD, which is nice. And the gamepad, of course, lets you uh, you know gives you the freedom to play from the bathroom, lets you do asymmetrical multiplayer, and that's all good and fun. So. Uh, and then we look at the games coming out for the Wii U. We have Super Mario uh, 3D World. We have Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. We got Smash Brothers. We got Mario Kart. You know, the usual suspects that kind of have to be released on every Nintendo system. Now, let's look at the 3DS. The 3DS is the most advanced Nintendo handheld there is. It's 3D. It's a DS. It's a 3DS. It's got the power of a GameCube in it or whatever. It's strong, you know. And games are 3D now. They're polygonal. They uh, are, you know, 3D free roaming. And if you look at the games on there, we have a Kid Icarus. We have Mario 3D Land. We have Mario Kart 7. We have Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, which, you know, is technically a Wii game, but it's on 3DS. And we have Smash Brothers. So, here's what I see. I see Nintendo consoles getting quirkier and quirkier. First we had the Wave Bird, then we had the Wii Mote, now we have the GamePad. They're getting more and more wireless. Nintendo handhelds are getting stronger and stronger. They are going to intersect next gen. We are coming to a head. And it's obvious to me when you look at games like Smash Brothers, which is being developed on both the Wii U and the 3DS. And they're identical. They have the same roster, they have this they don't have the same levels. I can't say they're identical. But they do have the same roster and they're trying to have out all the features basically in both of them. Now we don't know a whole lot about Smash Brothers, but that's what's going on. Simultaneous game is being developed. Let's look at Mario Kart. There was a just we just had Mario Kart 7, now we have Mario Kart 8. Because you have to have a Mario Kart on every system. Mario 3D Land, Mario 3D World, pretty similar games. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, pretty similar games. The next Nintendo system will be a home console handheld hybrid. You can carry it around with you, you can have the console plugged in, and with any luck it'll be like the Wii U where you can carry the handheld part with you and it'll just read from the console, but anywhere in the world. So, you can carry all your expensive stuff around without having to carry your expensive stuff around. You can leave it at home plugged in. And when you get home, you can play it on the big screen in glorious HD. So, why, why, why will this happen? Because Nintendo has to split their resources right now. They have to think of ways to make another Mario Kart on this handheld and on the home system and make them both worth buying. They have to make two Smash Brothers games and make them both worth buying. They have to do Mario 3D Land and Mario 3D World and have them both worth buying. Like, they, if they just had one dedicated system, they'd only need one Mario Kart, one Smash Brothers, one Super Mario 3D game, and they could have so many more resources and without having to double dip, and they won't have any droughts because all of their massive amounts of teams are focused on one console slash handheld. So that is my proposal, the Wii DS. Huh. It's going to happen. You know, I've been trying to think of a way to discredit your ideas and say you're crazy, but uh, that actually sounds really reasonable to me. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, 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 you know what else? Trump card. Think about the recent Iwata comments about combining the handheld and console divisions of, of the, like the game designers. Yeah. They just combined a few, a few months ago. I mean, that's kind of a giveaway. I think so, that makes a ton of sense, actually, yeah. So, what, yeah, what this means is that Nintendo can make a lot more uh, games, and they can basically have them all just on one system. They're having their cake and eat it, too. And eating it, too. There we go. Yeah, they've demonstrated that it's not important to them to be, like, super cutting edge in terms of graphics and whatever. Um, and they've done well not focusing on that, even though the you know, the other consoles have filled that void. Um, and if their next console is going to be a handheld console hybrid it probably won't be cutting edge in terms of graphics as well but i mean the market's already established that it doesn't really care about that um yeah you you don't have to worry about splitting the market anymore you know yeah. you don't have just handheld gamers or just console gamers and having to appease both of them with uh you know a steady stream of, of releases yeah nintendo said that the 3ds had a big problem when it launched i mean well we know this i mean they didn't have to say it but they they came out and admitted this because um 
they, you know, they didn't have enough resources, so they had to divvy up their resources and put it all on 3DS development to get out Mario 3D Land really quickly, Mario Kart 7. You know, they, they brought out all these games. And then the Wii U came out, and it had the same problem because of all this 3DS development. Mm. So it just seems clear to me to have it all in one place since that's where consoles and handhelds seem to be going from Nintendo anyway. Yeah. So an HD, you know, it, it'd be more powerful than the Wii U, but it might, you know, it probably won't be as powerful as the next Sony or Microsoft system. But that that would be, you know, kind of one of their their hooks. They'll probably have some secondary hook too, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be something like that, and it will be great. I think that'd be really cool. I'd honestly be pretty excited about that. All right. Well, cool. Me too. But that's like, like what it. five years off or something. Yeah, that's a little ways off. It just seems to me that's that's kind of where things are going. I, I really hope they give me like. You know, I hope the 3DS version of Smash Brothers feels significant enough to to, to warrant, you know, buying. Because I, I do want it. I just want to make sure, you know, I'd, I'd like it to be as good as it can be. I just hope, I don't want it to pull away resources from the console version either. Well, yeah, so, so I mean, if you're going to obviously buy the console version, but what, I mean... Yeah, if for them it kind of seems like the main version of the game, you know? Yes, and I would kind of wonder what they're going to do to make the 3DS version seem worthwhile. It, it needs something besides just portability. Yes, yes, it does. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fun, but sure. like, you, you, why, why, why do I need this in addition to the console version? Yeah. Is kind of what I'm, yeah, what I'm thinking. Yep. All right. Well, that is pretty much uh, a wrap, I think, for today's episode of the podcast. Um, I think that was, was fairly anything? efficient. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to trying to make it make it snappy, you know. Keep it keep it moving. Um, I know last time we had kind of a supersized one, but uh, if we want to do these fe- fairly regularly, I want to keep them a little bit more uh, condensed in terms of information. So thanks for listening to our show. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Matthew. And I'm Chris. And we'll see you next time around on the Brawl in the Family podcast. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.